In this video, you're going to learn about what dependency injection frameworks are and how they help your application's dependency management. We also refactor an existing program to make use of Autofac, a dependency injection framework for C Sharp. Let's jump into it. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years' experience on the .NET platform. My passion for learning and sharing knowledge, as well as helping other developers improve, are the reasons I started this channel. First of all, this video builds upon the introduction to dependency injection in C-Sharp video. In case you are new to dependency injection and you haven't already watched that video, you should watch it first. You'll find the link in the video description below. It will help you to understand the content and context of this video. If you know about the fundamentals of dependency injection and you want to learn about Autofac and how to use it, this video is what you want to see. In the first part of this video, we are going to have a look at what a dependency injection framework is and which problem it solves. Next, I will show you the major players in the C-Sharp space. There are many different frameworks available. Furthermore, I will tell you what Autofact makes special and why I think it's a good fit for many applications and why it's very developer friendly. In the last part of this video, I'm going to refactor the application created in the first part of the series and integrate Autofac into an existing c -sharp console application. A dependency injection framework helps you to manage your dependencies. It provides a central place often called the container which stores all your dependencies. When your application needs an instance of a concrete class, it asks the container to provide one. Most frameworks also help you with the lifetime and the scope of your classes and provide additional features, for example aspect-oriented programming. Do we really need a framework for this? The idea behind the dependency injection framework is to make things simpler for you. It also provides additional features. For example, you can control how many instances of a specific implementation are created. Could you do it all your own? Yes, of course. But keep in mind that the main goal of your application is something different. It doesn't matter what the purpose of your application is. It's probably not to write a lot of code dealing with code dependencies. In the first video of this series, we learned that making use of dependency injection helps the structure and dependency management of your code. But you don't want to write all this code on your own, don't you? Now that we are convinced that a dependency injection framework might be useful to us, let's see which frameworks are available. There are many different dependency injection frameworks for the .NET platform. Some of the better known frameworks are Autofact, Minject, Unity and StructureMap. StructureMap is the original dependency injection framework dating back to 2004 and is no longer recommended to use. The maintainers of the project recommend Lomar as an alternative. Some other frameworks are Spring.net, Castle Windsor and Simple Injector. And there are many more frameworks. You'll find a link in the video description to a good Stack Overflow answer with an overview of most frameworks. Autofact is an open source project hosted on GitHub and describes itself on their GitHub page as a framework to manage the dependencies between classes so that applications stay easy to change as they grow in size and complexity. You'll find Autofact on its GitHub page linked in the description below or using your preferred search engine. Autofact consists of a core package called Autofact and additional packages. Those packages can be installed if you want to use additional features that are not part of the core framework or if you are going to integrate Autofac to a specific framework like ASP.NET Web API or many other popular frameworks. You might ask yourself why Autofac? Autofac is my personal preference. I haven't used all of the other mentioned frameworks. Instead, I have worked on small and big projects using Autofac and I always got great results using it. The purpose of this short video is to give you a quick overview of dependency injection with Autofact and keep in mind that it's not possible to get into every detail of Autofact. Now, let's take a look at the basic features we're going to use in our sample project. A container is a central place where all your registered dependencies live. It is the heart of your application as it has all the information required to create and manage instances of your classes. A registration adds a dependency definition to the container. There are many different registration options. We will cover some of the basic registrations methods in this video. A model helps you structure the registration of your dependencies. You can group registrations into models and register the modules to your container. 
Modules help to structure the code especially in bigger applications which are built with modularity in mind. You can ask the container to create an instance of a specific type. The container resolves the dependencies, creates the instance and gives you a reference to the created object. Now let's take what we've learned so far and apply it to our sample application. Remember the class diagram of our application currently looks like this. We have an iNotification service interface with a single implementation called console notification. Next, we have a user class which has a reference to the iNotification service interface type and calls its notify username changed method in the change username method. The program class initializes the program and creates an instance of the user class. And now let's integrate AutoFAC. First, we need to add AutoFAC as a dependency to our project. We can do this using the Nugget Package Manager or using the Package Manager console. The package is called AutoFAC and we want to install the latest stable version, which at the time of this recording is 481. After the installation, we open the program class. The first class we need is the Container Builder class. Make sure to add a using statement for the AutoFAC namespace. The Container Builder will create the container using its build method. Next, we want to resolve the notification service using the AutoFAC container. Therefore, we create the notification service variable and assign an instance of an object created by the resolve method of the container. We hit F5, the code compiles, but we have a runtime exception of type component not registered exception with the exception message the requested service I notification service has not been registered. Let's head back to our program class. We created an instance of the container builder class and we created a container by calling its build method. Next, we want to resolve an instance of type I notification service. The problem is that we did not register our dependency to the container. Let's fix this by registering the console notification class as an implementation of the I notification service interface. We can do this using the register type method of the container builder followed by the as method. We register the console notification type to be resolved whenever an instance of the type I notification service is required. Once again, we hit the 5, start our application and finally we get the desired output in the console. We want to go a step further and refactor our application. Currently, the user class does two things. It acts as a data class which is holding user information and it calls the notification service if the username is changed. We create a new user service class. We move the dependency to the iNotification service type and the changed username method from the user class to the user service class. We also need to remove the private setter of the username property in the user class to make the setter visible to the user service class. Next, we remove the iNotification service dependency from the user class. The user class is now a simple data class without any code dependency. In the program class, we need to change the call of the change username method from the variable user1 to your user service variable. We initialize the user service variable using the container and resolve an instance of type user service. And yes, of course we need to register the user service class to the container before we can create an instance. We do this by registering the user service class as itself. Registering a class as itself allows us to use the class type to resolve the type from the container. This register method can be used if the type you want to register does not implement an interface. We start the application again and we still see the same console output. Great. As a last change to the code for this video, we want to make use of AutoFX modularity feature. We create a new program module class. This class needs to extend the module class from the AutoFX namespace. We also need to overwrite the load method from the parent class. The load method receives a container builder instance, which we can use to register our dependencies. We can use the same methods as we did in the program class. Therefore, we copy paste the definitions from the program class into our program module class and replace the variable name.
Back in the program class, we removed the copy dependency registrations and registered the program module class instead using the register module method of the container builder. We hit F5 one last time and we still see the same output in the console. Perfect. In this video, we learned why and how dependency injection frameworks can improve the structure and dependency management of your code. Next, we learned the basic concepts of Autofact including containers, container builders, how to register dependencies and how to resolve types at runtime. In the last part of this video, we defined the module and registered it to the container. That's it. You know the basic features of Autofact and you can implement it in your own projects. In the next video, we will dive deeper into Autofact and we will learn a few advanced concepts which help you to create an even more maintainable and extensible application. Please share your thoughts in the comments, give me some feedback and if you like this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next.